Well, hi everyone. Welcome to another lesson here at THSS Technology. Uh, today we're going to be doing an introductory lesson to parallax, uh, the parallax effect in Adobe After Effects. Um, just kind of a, a quick lesson how to uh, to bring your uh, Photoshop file into After Effects, how to convert it to 3D, and uh, how to start that uh, that uh, 2.5D effect that we'll be going with with our uh, parallax assignment. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to start by bringing in our Adobe Photoshop file. So if you remember from class, we uh, we, we selected our, our Photoshop file and we separated all the individual elements into separate layers. So let's import that now into After Effects. So we're going to go to File, Import, and we're going to import a file, or you can just press Control I. And then I just have my file saved here on the desktop. And uh, at this uh, import window here, we need to make a few changes. So we need to change the import kind to Composition, Retain, Layer Sizes. And we need to check off merge layer styles into footage. Okay, uh, so that is really important. Then we're going to click OK, and then it's going to bring our files over here into our project window. So you're going to have two files. We're going to have a folder with a, a bunch of different Photoshop files in them, and we're going to have our composition file. So we're going to want to open that up by double clicking on it. Uh, what you're going to see now is um, you're going to see the Photoshop file we were working on in class. But down here in the bottom left in our uh, layers panel, you can see we have all of our individual layers that we isolated in Photoshop, including our original master layer, which we actually don't need, but we'll turn it back on. But we have our fence, we've got our grass, we've got the soccer ball, and we've got the right player, left player, and our main center player there. <clears throat> so in order to achieve the parallax effects, we need to convert these layers into three-dimensional layers. Uh, traditionally in Photoshop, you're working in 2D on the X and Y axis, but we need to be able to move our players in 3D space by moving them on the Z axis. So what we're going to do down here in the layer panel is we're going to check uh, the little 3D box next to all these layers. We don't need to do for the background layer, but you can if you want. It doesn't really matter. And you're not going to see any actual major change um, uh, here in our composition window in our active camera. Uh, so let's change our view from one view to a two view. Okay. And now on our right hand window, I got this set to active camera. And our left hand window, I got this selected to top view. And I can zoom out here. And we have to kind of imagine this, we're looking at a, a piece of paper or a picture from, uh, from a bird's eye view. So all you're seeing is a straight line. But if I grab one of my layers here and I move it out on the Z axis, you can see I can bring it towards the camera, uh, in which case it's getting bigger there, or I can push it away from the camera and it gets smaller until eventually it's behind the fence. So that's kind of the, the effect we're going here there uh, with this. So what we want to do now is we want to rearrange our layers uh, to create distance. <clears throat> so when we are zooming in our uh, camera, uh, we'll be able to create that uh, interesting depth of field that we're going for in this assignment. So I'm going to start by taking our fence layer, since this is our furthest back layer, and pushing it away from the camera. And I'm actually going to push it back quite far here. So what we've noticed is as I push it further away from the camera here in our top view, you're going to notice on our active camera here, the fence has gotten a lot smaller. That's because we pushed it away from the camera. But we want to make sure that uh, all the objects kind of look like they did in the original photo. So I'm going to select that fence layer. And I'm going to go down to my layer panel here. And I'm going to press S for scale. And I'm going to scale up this fence uh, until it roughly fills our scene again. And let's just move it up. Excellent, so our fence is back considerably further, but in our active camera window, it looks exactly the same like before we actually got started. So let's do the same with our grass. So I'm gonna take our grass layer, we're gonna push the grass back, not quite back as far as the fence. We'll hit S for scale on the grass, and let's scale up the grass. That's a bit too big. All right, a little bit bigger, perfect. And then let's just lower this grass down there. Excellent. Okay. Once again, looks the same as it did before. Um, if anything, we might just want to lower it down a little bit more so we can see the bottom bar of our fence there. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right player and uh, we are going to push him back. All right. Now let's scale, uh, scale up our right player. So it looks... To, to roughly be the same size he was before. And I'm actually gonna push him off on the x-axis a little bit till his leg gets cut off by our main player. Perfect. And then let's take our left player and we're actually gonna bring him towards the camera. But now we actually need to scale him down because he is too big. And let's kind of push him off to where he was. There's his foot getting cut off. 
and we can probably even scale him down just a little bit more. And then let's just make sure he's off the screen. Excellent, so everything's kind of looking as it did at the start. And for our main player, we can probably just leave him in the center there uh, because we adjusted the other two players in the scene. Okay, now that we got our scene set up, as you can see, we have multiple different layers here in our parallax. Uh, we need to add a artificial camera here and we're gonna animate that camera zooming in on our scene. So I'm gonna go down to my layer panel here. We're gonna right click, we're gonna create a new camera. And I'm gonna put this camera at uh, 35 mils, give it a cinematic look and we will click OK. Now, once I've done that, you're gonna actually notice it's going to change the aspect ratio a little bit of our scene and our uh, fence and our uh, grass is gonna be a little bit off in scale. So let's just uh, scale those up so they fit properly again. Easy fix, doesn't take long. Uh, you can bypass a step if you want to uh, just actually bring in the camera first before you start moving the layers around and you don't need to worry about it as much, but I'll leave that up to you. And let's move this down a little bit so we see the bar on the fence. Excellent. And let's actually take our left player here and let's scale them down a little bit more and move them a bit more to the right on the x-axis. Perfect, okay, so everything's looking good as the original photo did, uh, but now we've put in an artificial camera here and you can select on the camera and you can kind of see its field of view. So what we're gonna do is we want the camera to move in on the Z axis. And let's have a look at what this is gonna do here. So if I grab the camera by the Z axis and move it in, you're gonna see we're gonna get this 3D effect as it zooms in our players, but because of the separation in the layers now, uh, objects in the back of the camera move in slower than objects at the front. So you kind of get this uh, neat little parallax effect. So let's press Control Z to go back to our start. And we're gonna want to animate that camera using keyframes. Really simple to do. We gotta think about what we're gonna animate. Well, we wanna animate the position of the camera because we're moving it in on the Z axis there. So with the camera selected, I'm gonna press P for position. In order to start the animation process, we have to turn on keyframes by checking on the little stopwatch here, click. And now we've set a keyframe at zero seconds. When you enable keyframes, you can see you get this little diamond here and it's gonna put the keyframe wherever your little timeline widget is. So I got a, uh, a position keyframe here at zero seconds. I'm gonna move ahead to 10 seconds. Actually, we'll just do that at six seconds while this quicker zoom in. And then at the six second point, I'm gonna zoom in the camera to where I want it to end. And we'll kind of go right to there. And then it'll automatically add that secondary keyframe. And so now if I go back to the start, hit spacebar to play. It's gonna play your animation as it zooms in on the players. Actually a little bit too fast, so I'm gonna grab this keyframe and I'm gonna move it to eight seconds. And now it should zoom in a little bit slower. Let's see how that looks. Excellent, that is a better speed there for our zoom in, perfect. Okay, that looks good. So that's kind of the introductory to parallax uh, graphics, getting your Photoshop uh, assignment loaded in, ready to go. In our next lesson, we'll go over how to add subtle movements to our still photos uh, using the, the Puppet Warp tool. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all later.